Hello, today I'm going to work on Project 7, Keyboard Instrument. This really goes hand in hand with Project 6, which was the Light Theremin. Check out my, my tutorial on that if you'd like. Uh, this I feel, if I had, if I had designed these uh, starter kits, I would have actually made the Keyboard Instrument uh, Project 6 and then the Light Theremin Project 7, because I feel like Keyboard Instrument really gives you the basics of understanding and then you can build on it on Light Theremin. But uh, either way, if you've done Project 6 already, this is a, a great one to work on. Next, if you haven't done the Light Theremin yet, you're probably in better luck. Do this one first and then go on to the Light Theremin. So to get here, we log into Tinkercad.com. You can use your Google account. Uh, you can sign up for an account with them. You will click on Learn. You'll click on Circuits. You'll switch to Projects. Click on Show All Arduino. And I've made a video on almost every single one of these up until Keyboard Instruments. So this is the one we're doing today. Try to get it done in one take. My, my kids, this is the fourth time I've tried to start. My kids are being very loud, having fun. So I do apologize if, if you can't hear me, but kids are having fun. So um, I will use the code that I got from the Arduino website directly, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. For those of you that this is your first project, this is called a breadboard. It's a way of prototyping, connecting components to the Arduino, which is right here. This is the microcontroller on the Arduino, and we program it to connect wires to these pins to either uh, take in signals and send out electricity, um, and then these provide power. So, and then there's, we talked about this last time, there's actually a built-in LED that you can control on pin number 13. I, I don't think we're going to use that one uh, in this project, but we'll see. So uh, you can definitely read through it. If you're doing this in with the actual uh, Arduino, you need a piezo buzzer, four push buttons, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, one 220 ohm resistor, and one mega ohm, I'm guessing that's what it stands for, a resistor. And of course, your Arduino, Uno, and a breadboard. And those resistors, we'll talk about the colors in just a little bit so you have the right ones, okay? Moving forward, let's set up the circuit. So as always, we start by hooking up our 5 volt power. You could do 3.3 volt, but I think a lot of these components just run off 5 volts anyways. Uh, so 5 volts is a great way to start. They do say connect the positive to the positive rail. So we run one from here to there. We make it red because it's positive. Then we run this to the ground and we make it black because it's negative or a ground. Uh, this red connects all of these little holes. They're all positive. And then all of these little holes are negative because it's connected that way. Then we need a piezo speaker, which is connected on three and eight. So let's search for the piezo. And it was connected on three and eight. There is, if we look, there is a ground connected on three and then eight connects to eight, just like the last one. So we go three to three. And I'll talk about those in just a second. And then eight to eight. And that's red. The reason why it's red is electricity is going to flow out of this pin, depending on how we program it. It will go through here, into here, into this side, which they actually call negative, but this uh, doesn't have a direction to it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe it's just saying because positive would be running through here. And if we used a multimeter, maybe the positive <laughs> electricity would be coming out of this end. Either way, we're good. Uh, so electricity runs out of here, runs through this rail, uh, goes through the speaker, making noise, and then going to the ground. If we didn't have this, the electricity wouldn't flow through because electricity runs you know, from the source to the ground. And if there's no ground, it's not going to run. So uh, right now, like say we took this and hooked it up instead of to number eight, we hooked it up to the positive. It would just make one constant noise until the power ran out from whatever power source you're using on the Arduino. Moving forward, we are going to add some buttons. Now these buttons, if you open up your Xbox controller or your PlayStation controller, or uh, not not your your remote control for your TV, but um, a lot of those nicer, more expensive controllers uh, in your cell phone, they're going to be just like this. Okay, the ones in your cell phone will probably be smaller, uh, but we'll connect these. Let's just get them all in line first. So we're going to look, they start off at 14. 
and they have a gap of one in between. So I'm guessing these are just called buttons. So I'll go ahead and search. Uh, we will talk about in a little bit, and it's funny, I, I already forgot. Uh, it starts on 14, okay. So we start on 14, we have a little gap to the next one, and there were four of them. So you can just push these in. Uh, obviously you want to make sure you're not bending anything. And if we look at the ends, this just says terminal 1A, I believe it says, terminal 2A, terminal 2B, terminal 1B. And we'll see how it's set up to better understand what's going on. So there is, you need electricity running through these, right? So we have positive running to 14, which gives electricity here. It runs through here. If the button's pushed, it runs through here. And then electricity will be powered here. Yeah, let's double check that. Okay. Actually, let, let's do this one first. So electricity runs here. If you push the button, the electricity will run to A0 at a certain frequency. Then we have all these different resistors. And so depending on which one we press, there's going to be a different amount of resistance. What that means is, depending on which one we press, a different signal will be sent to analog zero, very much like the light theremin, right? There, I'd imagine it's still zero to 1,023. I got it correct this time. There's a total of 1,024 values that it can receive. So zero all the way to 1,023. And because of these resistors, they're going to send a different amount of electricity depending on which button you push. You'll notice there is, this is no resistance. So if I push this, all five volts will make its way to A0, right? If I press this button, it's getting its electricity from this resistor. So it's going to have a different amount of electricity, which will then run through here into A0 giving it a different reading. Same with this one. This is a different resistor. So a different amount of electricity. If I push the button, it will run through this wire, which will run through this wire, which will go to A0. Same with this, a different amount of electricity for this button. If I press it, it will run here to here to here to A0. And the last one, we've got resistance, and that's to ground all of these. Um, I'd imagine that's just to keep things... Uh, you don't want to direct ground because you could burn out your components, right? If you've ever, uh, I don't know, you turn a light bulb on and off too much, it, it'll burn out. Uh, same with this. If you run too much electricity through these, it, it could burn out. So they're grounding every single one of these with this resistor. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so let's move forward and set it up. So we've got this to that. Maybe I'll remember it. We'll see. So I've got a positive running here. That should be good. And then we've got this to there. I will change those colors in just a minute. Okay. This to that, this to that. Uh, we've got this definitely running over here. So I'm going to change these. This is positive, so it's going to be red. Uh, if you're setting this up and, you know, and uh, not on the computer, then if you don't have these colors, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's really nice to keep the colors correct, especially when you start getting complicated. Um, you know, like my motorcycle was having some issues and I needed to look at the wiring diagram. Well, there are so many wires in that thing that there's no way I would know what's going on if all the wires were the same color or they were the wrong color. So it's nice to be able to have the correct ones. All right. So now we look and I believe I'm, I believe I'm set up correctly. Let me just double check that. Yep, looks correct. And then we need to make sure that we have the correct resistors. But for right now, we can just grab, if you're on here, you can just grab any resistor and then we will rename it. So I'm going to grab any resistor. Let me just search resistor. On here, the reason why I can do this is because we change the resistor once we have grabbed it. So I see a resistor. There was a resistor providing positive there. There's a resistor providing positive there. There's a resistor providing positive there, and then there's a resistor grounding our entire circuit. But you'll notice the colors are incorrect, and so the best way to go through that is to just look through, and let's make sure that we're, we're doing it correctly, okay? So you will use a 220-ohm, 10-ohm, 1-mega-ohm resistor in that order. So we're starting with 
a 220. Remember, there's no resistance in here. Now we're going to click on this, um, and we will choose 220 ohm. So this is a this is kilo ohm. We need to change it to ohm, and we need to type 220. And then you'll see the colors should change. Just a moment. Okay, so the colors did change. If you're doing this in real life, you want to make sure you're matching the colors. So that is correct. It goes red, red, brown, and then whatever that color is, gold maybe. Then the next one is a 10 kilo ohm. So make sure you switch that to kilo ohm and then a 10. And then the colors should match. If you have a, a resistor that you don't know what the resistance is, you can just look up a, a resistor color chart online. You can enter those colors and it'll tell you the resistance. We have a one mega ohm. So we go here, click on it, change it to mega ohms. And that should be good. And let me double check it. It has brown, black, green. That's not correct. That's because I chose the lowercase milla ohm. I think that would have been. So good thing I double checked that. Otherwise it could burn out a component. And the last one, is that correct? Okay. And then a 10 kilo ohm resistor for ground. So it's on kilo ohm. We type 10. We make sure the colors are correct. Brown, black, orange. Same as this. Awesome. So now we move forward. All right. And this is programming. So now we're going to get into the programming. As always, I am not going to use the code that they use on this website because I do not agree with not having notes in our code. I think it's very important to always write notes in our code. Uh, you're more than welcome to go through all of this, but it, I believe it's irresponsible to not have notes in the code. The reason why is if someone in the future wants to use that code or edit that code, or you go back and you want to fix that code, it's good to have the information about what the code was actually doing. So I go on create.arduino.cc. I go to examples down to the starter bait starter kit, basic kit, and click on keyboard. Now you can you can use theirs, that's totally fine, uh, but I really like having the notes in here. As always, shout out to Scott Fitzgerald, awesome job on this. So what we're going to do is we are going to create some integers. Basic math here, we're creating something called notes, and we're creating it um, in, I believe this is would be called an array. So it says the numbers below correspond, yep, it's an array, uh, correspond to the frequencies of middle C, D, E, and F. Now you could look up the frequencies of other notes if you would like it. Um, you can definitely do that. But in this case, we have C, which is at 262, uh, D is at 294, E is at 330, and F is at 349. Then we're going to start our serial. Uh, what that means is we're able to see in the serial monitor exactly what it is reading. Then this one's nice and easy. Uh, there's a, a void loop. So void setup runs one time. It's just turning on that serial monitor. And then a void loop is something that runs over and over and over. And this is always our normal program. So we're going to create an integer called key value. And that's going to be equal to analog read a zero. So that's whatever this is reading. Remember, it got zero to 1024. So whatever that is, is what our our integer key value is going to be equal to. And remember, this is a loop. It just continues updating. Then send the value to the serial monitor. So it's going to print it. It's going to show us in the serial monitor. All right. Then we talk about how it's going to play each note. So we're saying if the key value is 1023, then play note zero so the way this works is if it's a bracket and then you have zero, zero is referring to the first number in that array. If you go on codecademy.com and you learn uh, Python or JavaScript, there's a, you'll learn about these arrays. And the big thing is that normally messes you up is you want to count this as the first value. Well, it's not because zero is the first value. So zero is this. So what we're saying is if there is a value. So maybe, uh, you know, I'd imagine this is the full amount of electricity. So when we press this one, because there's no resistor, when we press this one, which would be a reading of 1023, then play that first note, which is a C. 
okay? Else, if it's more than or equal to 990, but less than 1,010, play the second note in the array. So 294, which was D, and so on. And so it's going through all that, um, and it's saying, if we press this, play C, D, E, F. Hopefully that makes sense to you, uh, based on these resistance uh, resistors that are providing the electricity, a different amount of electricity will come from those buttons. And then it says if the value is out of range, play no tone. Sometimes, especially when you press these buttons, there will be some weird readings that come out. Um, and there's a way to fix that. I, I believe it's called debounce, and I, I haven't done that in quite a while. So maybe we'll get that, to that in a future programming uh, lesson. But that's it. So now what we do is we hit start simulation. There's no waiting like on the theremin. It should just work once it's initialized. If you, uh, let me let me stop this really quickly. If you're doing this in, in person, you can power this with a USB or a nine volt battery plugged in there. And when you hit start, you'll see some flashing. And then once it, it stops flashing or there's constant lights, it's good to go. So then what we can do is we can press these buttons. Now that sounds awful on my computer. It, it'll probably sound nicer in, in person. Let me try that again. So that's C, D, E, F. Now you'll notice there are some weird things in there. Like it's not perfect. And that's because it is getting strange readings sometimes. If we look at our serial monitor right now, it says zero. If I press this, it's 1023. Now I believe why we're hearing that sort of, uh, I don't know, the, the vibrato uh, is because it's number one doing post with modulation and we're hearing it in an analog device. So it's turning on and off very quickly to get that. Um, also, there might be some sort of refresh rate going on here that's slowing it down slightly. We didn't put a weight, so I'm not sure totally. Um, but so we see the readings. So because that's less than 1,010, it's going to play the, the second note. That one's less than 515 and above 505, so it plays the third note. Now, this one, it said less than or equal to 10, so that's right there. If I was relying on this for some reason, uh, like it really, oh, I, I'm going to play a concert on this thing. Uh, I would I would change that value to like 15. The biggest reason why is I don't want anything close to it because if it's what if what if it comes out of uh, spec for a second then it's going to stop playing. Now obviously that seems constant, so it's good. So you could add more notes, you could add more buttons, you could do all that stuff. You could say, hey, if I push two buttons, um, well. Not with this one, because this you'd have to add a resistor. But two buttons, you might be able to figure out the math to get it playing a different note and all that stuff. But that's it. So that is uh, project number seven, keyboard instrument. And I hope it was helpful. Let me just make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, I'm sure I haven't missed anything in here. Go ahead and read through that if you really want to learn about it. They do talk about making a keyboard enclosure. I never do those extra things because I want to take my Arduino apart and do the next project. If I make it a permanent structure, then I'm never going to do the next project. So I would suggest not doing that um, unless you have a bunch of Arduinos or you're just making this to show people how it works. So there we go. If you want to improve your sound, maybe get a speaker other than a piezo speaker and you can see how it sounds. So have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much, and be sure and like and subscribe, okay? See ya.